So this has to be one of the most requested videos on the channel, and that's how to color grade C-Log footage. Now, the C-Log footage that I'm gonna be using is from the C200, so in particular, Canon C-Log2. Now, if you guys are interested in learning how to color grade footage from the USR, because that's a different type of C-Log, let me know in the comments section down below. So the computer that I'm gonna be using to color grade uh, the C-Log footage is Acer Concept D7, and they were actually kind enough to send over this laptop and also sponsor today's video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into color grading. Now, this first clip that I'm gonna show you is of this beautiful model. We shot this without any fancy lighting. This is all natural lighting, because I wanna show you something that maybe you guys can also film for yourself, meaning you're not using any fancy equipment, just the camera itself. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is Canon C200 raw files, which means that if you load your footage into Premiere Pro, and let's say, for example, you click on your footage and you go to the master tab, you will have all of the raw capabilities. For example, color temperature, I can adjust my color temperature. Right now, you see it that it's at 5,000. That's because I recorded this at 5,000 Kelvin, but I can still adjust this in post-production. That's like the beauty of raw. The other thing is I can adjust my tint values. It's at zero, so I didn't make any changes there, and also my exposure. But what you have to keep in mind whenever you're color grading is I am showing you how to color grade Canon Log 2 footage. So you'll notice here, there's a drop down menu and you can select the gamma. So you can select from Canon Log 2, Canon Log 3, BT709, wide dynamic range, and DCI. You wanna make sure that you are always on Canon Log 2. You can also do Canon Log 3, but the, the steps that I'm showing you right now are in particular to Canon Log 2. First thing that I like to do before I do anything is drop my base LUT. I actually created this base LUT, which I think looks fantastic, and I'm actually giving it away for free. So if you guys are interested in that, there will be also a link down below so you guys can go ahead and download that. Now, I actually installed it in Premiere so it lives in my creative tab. You don't have to do that, but I just like it because it just makes it easier for me to access it. So from here, you'll see that there is a LUT called C200 Base. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And to me, that just looks so beautiful. I mean, right off the bat, you're gonna say, Armand, that looks great. It has this like nice teal and orange look. It's a great start. And if I get lazy, I can just literally drop this LUT and just not even have to do anything else, but we wanna make it look better, of course. Now, one thing I will tell you, I do things a little bit unorthodox, so I don't really follow scopes. I kinda of have this like look and feel, especially, again, it's important, color calibrated monitor. If it looks good to me, and if that's the look I'm looking for, then hey, by all means, let's go for it. So what I like to do is start from the top to bottom from the basic color correction tab. So like color temperature, for example. To me, that looks pretty good. Now, don't feel like you can't experiment with things. like. You know, if you wanna go cooler, if you wanna go warmer, like feel free to just move the sliders around and see what it does. That's the way I learn the most. And if, again, if it looks good to you, then go for it. So in terms of exposure, it looks pretty good. I do wanna add a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and just move that slider over to right about there. That looks pretty good. Highlights look a little bit too high. So I'm gonna go bring that down a hair and then shadows. So one thing about log is you definitely always wanna crush the shadows a bit. So, you know, feel free to always bring those down and see that image just looks beautiful. Whites, just tone that down a little bit. Again, this is all look and feel, and feel free to experiment. So, what, what do whites do? If I bring it up, whoa, it obviously it exposes the image a little bit hotter And if I bring it down, but at the same time, you might want that look. Like, for example, I brought the whites to 32% but that doesn't look bad. I mean, it looks a little bit more dreamy and that may be the look that you're going for. So don't be afraid to experiment. I'm gonna tone that down though. I kind of like it at 8.6. Blacks, again, crushing the blacks a little bit. That looks really good. Now remember, I dropped my base lid and you're probably thinking, man, that looks pretty good. Now watch, I'm gonna turn the effect off just to see these little simple basic color corrections, what they did to the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Now it starts to look a little flatter, right? So initially when I dropped it, it looked really good, but now when you see it in comparison to the color grade that I did, now it looks flat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Now it gives it more of a high contrast, more punchy look. Once again, that's the style that I like. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you want it a little bit more desaturated so you can turn that down a little bit, which, you know, it's all preference, of course. I am gonna turn the saturation down a little bit to 95%. I do feel it's a little bit overly saturated. See, the thing is when you move the contrast and you start making it a little bit more punchy, what happens is the image also starts to add a little bit more color. You get more color back, so just keep that in mind. The next tab that I go is my curves. So if you've ever edited S-Log footage from Sony, you'll notice that you know S-Log, there is an S-curve 
to the curve. So normally they do something like this. And I mean, again, that looks pretty good. I'm looking at this and I can live with that, but I do something a little different. So what I like to do is create these points. Now, if you don't understand what these curves are, so this top area controls the highlights, this mid area controls the midtones, and this lower area controls the shadows. And what I like to do is create these little points in between the grid, and then there's one that I have right in the middle between, this is more of the shadow area, and I'll explain why I do that. So remember the S log looked pretty cool. So remember, we want to control the highlights here and the highlights look pretty good. Maybe just tone it down. Actually, I want to bring it up a little bit. Just, just to here. Everything is just minute changes. Now, once again, I can't stress so much. Feel free to experiment because look what it does. I want you to pay attention to her um, cheekbone area right here as I move my mid-tone slider here. So you'll notice it starts getting really like, like it's almost like a 3D effect. So you'll notice like I'm gonna take, take it away. It makes her cheeks look a bit dull, but then if I bring it up, it has, I don't wanna call it this 3D look, but it has more depth. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off just so you can see. Again, pay attention to this when I turn my curves off. So turn it off, very ever so slightly though, it just makes that pop. I might even increase it just a hair, a little bit more. So yeah, I just wanna make that, three, you know, make the image pop, especially because she's really beautiful and then her eyes just come to life. So now in my shadows, I always like to crush it a little bit. So just bring that down a hair. There we go. Now remember this last little tab that I kind of have in between. The reason I do this is because a lot of people like to go into the creative tab and add faded film. Now faded film looks cool. I mean, I kind of show, showing you right here, I added about 20% and you know, it has a really cool look, but I don't like to do it that way. What I like to do is I like to do it in my curves. So I lift the shadows up, but I only do it just ever so slightly. So I'll do something like this. To me, that looks a lot more cinematic, it has that more, it's not quite faded, but it brings up the black levels a little bit more. Now, once again, I'm gonna turn the effect off. So I'm gonna go here to my curves and then turn it off. Whoa, that's a big difference. So that was just with basic color correction. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on with the curves. And to me, that looks really, really good. And remember, this is where we started off. I'm gonna take the whole thing off. This is just, you know, plain, desaturated log footage and then now we lo it looks like this and it just took a matter of a couple of minutes and that's kind of basically it there is only one more thing that I sometimes do so I'll jump into my creative tab and then I'll add sharpening sometimes for the most part I like more of a softer image I like it to look more like film but if you do want to add sharpening I would recommend don't go over 20 so 20 would be the most that I would add in Canon, you know, Canon C200 footage. And then maybe sometimes, again, these are just, it depends on the, on how I shot it. I go back into my uh, curves. And if you notice, like in her case, her skin tones look a little too red. It could have been the makeup that she was using. So what I like to do is I go to my hue and saturation curve. I grab the little eyedropper and I'll grab a little, I'll sample an area right around right here where it's a little bit red. And then from there, what I do is I grab this and I pull the reds down just a hair. And look at that, her skin, her skin just looks beautiful. I mean, Canon shoots really good footage. I mean, the skin tones always look great, but like I said, this could have just been makeup or a reflection from the building or something like that. That just made her face look a little bit too red. But for me, this looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and just play that footage for you guys. Ah, oh, there we go, look at that. Love it. And it really looks great. Now, what we're gonna do is take what we've just learned and apply it to a different clip that's actually a product. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So I am actually working on this as we speak. Um, this is actually a product I just shot recently and it needs color grading. So we're gonna do it kind of like a real live demo. So once again, we go into the creative tab, apply that C200 base LUT. I know that I slightly underexposed this a little bit. Again, that's okay. Color temperature looks fine to me. Tint looks great. I will expose just a little bit more and look at the difference it makes. Just those little small changes. I don't know if I want to add contrast. I guess I'll add a little bit. I like high contrast images and just in case you couldn't tell. Highlights look great. Maybe just tone those down. Remember the basic color correction tab is just what it sounds. Very basic minor changes. So the shadows, um, actually because I'm shooting something that's black, I want to leave the shadows alone. Don't want to touch that. And then same thing with the whites and the blacks. I wanna just kinda of tone that down maybe just a hair. But other than that, I think this looks great. But once again, we go into our curves. We apply our little dots here. This is where the magic happens. 
in the curves. A lot of people don't use curves because they're afraid. They don't experiment. Feel free to experiment. So I'll show you guys. I'll kind of crank this up and show you what that does. You'll notice on the wood areas how it just makes the wood pop. So pay attention here to the wood. Look how it just makes it pop as opposed to making it dull. So I want that wood to pop. So in this case, I'm gonna make this a little bit more pronounced in comparison to skin tones. I didn't wanna overdo it because then it's gonna start looking very blotchy. So now let's go into our mid-tones here. And again, I'm just messing around with this. Look at that. As soon as I tweak the mid-tones up a little bit, everything just comes alive. And that's what you want. You want your image to pop. Shadows, i probably gonna tone it down just a hair, very contrast. Just a, just a little bit more. And then the little trick I did for the uh, faded film, not too much, because this is black, but I mean, I think that looks pretty good. With the exception that I feel it's a little too saturated. Remember, when you start pulling and pushing your image and adding more contrast, as I mentioned earlier, it will bring color back. So for me, I probably will tone this down maybe to 85. That looks pretty good. And then I do feel that the table just looks a bit too yellow. So we're gonna apply the same hue and saturation technique that I mentioned earlier, is you grab your little eyedropper tool, you kind of sample that, and then just kind of bring this down here, and look at that. That looks more like natural wood as opposed to like this artificial yellow stuff. But other than that, that looks pretty, I mean, I think this looks pretty damn good. So now what you can do, here's a little tip, is once you've created this, you can say, for example, right click, and then save this as a preset. And then when you save this as a, as a preset, you can now apply this to all of your other footage. And you'd be surprised, so I'll show you really quick, like just delete it that, and then I'm gonna apply this preset. So I'll go to my effects, and then I have my C200 demo preset, and I'll drop that, and then that's what it looks like. It looks great. Now let's take a look at some other footage. Let's say, I'll take a look at right here, where there's a, actually there's a hand right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my C200 demo footage that I literally just did, and then bam, drop it in there. Look at that. I mean, that looks really good. Skin tones look great, product looks great. So that's basically how I color grade Canon C-Log footage. I know it was a bit anticlimactic. There wasn't this like magical slider button that you didn't know about. Don't forget to download that base load because it's gonna save you a ton of time. My name is Armando. Thanks again for watching. You guys will catch me in the next one. Adios.